Xenocyan existed from the early Pleistocene to the middle Pleistocene in Africa and Eurasia. The diversity of the wolf-sized species decreased by the end of the early Pleistocene. Just before the appearance of the dire wolf, North America was invaded by the genus Xenocyan, which was as large as them and more hypercarnivorous. The fossil record shows them as rare and it is assumed that they could not compete with the newly derived dire wolf. This early, 80 cm long canine, named Hesperosian, looked more like a civet or a small raccoon. Its body and tail were long and flexible, while its limbs were weak and short. Still, the build of its ossicles and distribution of its teeth showed it was a canid. It may have been an omnivore. It existed for approximately 12 million years. Sinodesmus was one of the first canids to truly look dog-like. At around 1 meter in length, it was about the same size as a modern coyote, but had a shorter skull, heavier tail, and longer rump. The shape of its limb suggests that it was not a very good runner compared to most other canids. It probably attacked prey from an ambush. Unlike modern dogs, it had five toes on each foot, bearing partially retractable claws. Aelurodon is one of the better known of the so-called bone-crushing dogs of the Borophagini. Canids like Aelurodon got their nickname from the form of their short snouts which have also been described as hyena-like. Because of their shortness, the snout force food towards the back of the mouth nearer to where the jaw articulates. This allows for a greater amount of force to be focused upon whatever was in the mouth so that when say a bone was inside, it had the bite force necessary to break it open. Typical features of this genus are a bulging forehead and powerful jaws. Barophagus has been considered to be probably a scavenger by paleontologists in the past. Its crushing premolar teeth and strong jaw muscles would have been used to crack open bone, much like the hyena of the old world. However, its fossils are so abundant and geographically widespread that some paleontologists now argue that it must have been both the dominant carnivore of its time and thus an active predator because carrion feeding alone could not have sustained such a large population. Among the true foxes, the red fox represents a more progressive form in the direction of carnivory. Apart from its large size, it is distinguished from other fox species by its ability to adapt quickly to new environments. They are usually found in pairs or small groups consisting of families, such as a mated pair and their young. The species primarily feeds on small rodents, birds, reptiles and invertebrates. Fruit and vegetable matter is also eaten sometimes. Although the red fox tends to kill smaller predators, it is vulnerable to attack from larger predators. The species has a long history of association with humans, having been extensively hunted as a pest and fur-bearer for many centuries, as well as being represented in human folklore and mythology. Because of its widespread distribution and large population, it is one of the most important fur-bearing animals harvested for the fur trade. Too small to pose a threat to humans, it has extensively benefited from the presence of human habitation, and has successfully colonized many suburban and urban areas. The Arctic fox has a thick fur coat that changes color with the seasons. In winter, it turns white to blend in with the snowy environment, while in summer, it becomes brown or gray. This adaptation helps it to camouflage effectively in its surroundings. They are omnivores and have a varied diet, they are also known to scavenge food from polar bear kills. These foxes are known for their agility and can jump high and dig deep to find food beneath the snow. They endure extremely cold temperatures, with their fur providing excellent insulation. They also have a short muzzle, short legs, and a bushy tail that helps them minimize heat loss from their body.
Tibetan fox is exceptionally well adapted to the harsh environment of the Tibetan plateau, where oxygen levels are lower due to the high altitude. It has a larger lung capacity and more efficient blood circulation to cope with these conditions. It is an opportunistic omnivore, feeding on a variety of foods such as small mammals, insects and plant matter. They are generally solitary animals, although they may be seen in pairs or small family groups during the breeding season. They use scent marking and vocalizations to communicate with one another. Due to its unique adaptations to high-altitude environments, the Tibetan fox is of interest to researchers studying evolutionary biology and physiology. The most distinctive feature of the fennec is its unusually large ears, which serve to dissipate heat and listen for underground prey. It is the smallest fox species. Its coat, ears and kidney functions have adapted to the desert environment with high temperatures and little water. It mainly eats insects, small mammals and vegetations that contain water. It has a lifespan of up to 14 years in captivity and about 10 years in the wild. Its main predators are the Varro's eagle owl and jackals. Fennec families dig out burrows in the sand for habitation and protection. Precise population figures are not known but are estimated from the frequency of sightings. These indicate that the fennec is currently not threatened by extinction. The bat-eared fox is easily recognized by its large ears, which are adapted to help it detect insect prey and used for thermoregulation. Unlike most other foxes, it has a predominantly insectivorous diet. They are usually nocturnal and crepuscular, they communicate using various vocalizations and body postures. They have a wide range of vocalizations, including barks, growls and chirps, which they use to communicate with each other. They play a role in controlling insect populations, especially termites, which are important ecosystem engineers in their habitats. By consuming termites, these foxes can help regulate the termite populations and their impact on vegetation. The crab-eating fox creates monogamic teams for hunting and despite being capable of tunneling, they prefer to take over other animals' burrows. It searches for crabs on muddy floodplains during the wet season, giving this animal its common name. It is an opportunist and an omnivore, preferring insects or meat from rodents and birds when available. The common raccoon dog is named for the resemblance of its masked face to that of the North American common raccoon. Due to the fur trade, it dog has been widely introduced in Europe, where it has been treated as a potentially hazardous invasive species. They adapt their diets to the season, in late autumn and winter they feed mostly on rodents and carrion, while fruit, insects and amphibians predominate in spring. They are the only canids known to hibernate. In early winter, they increase their subcutaneous fat by 20% and their internal fat by 5%. Animals failing to reach these fat levels usually do not survive the winter. Compared to members of the genus Canis, the black-backed jackal is a very ancient species, and has changed little since the Pleistocene, being the most basal wolf-like canine. It is a monogamous animal, whose young may remain with the family to help raise new generations of pups. It has a wide array of food sources, feeding on small to medium-sized animals, as well as plant matter and human refuse. The species generally shows a preference for open areas with little dense vegetation, though it occupies a wide range of habitats, from arid coastal deserts to areas with more than 2,000 mm of rainfall. They are major rabies vectors, and have been associated with epidemics, which appear to cycle every four to eight years. The Falkland Islands wolf is an example of insular adaptation, where a species evolves unique characteristics due to isolation on an island. 
it is believed to have arrived on the Falkland Islands before the arrival of humans. Over time, it evolved to fill a niche as the apex predator of the island ecosystem, with no natural competitors or predators. Human activities such as hunting, habitat destruction and competition for resources with introduced livestock were major factors of its extinction. Additionally, the introduction of invasive species like rats, which could have competed with the wolf for food and prey items, may have played a role. Bush dogs are small-sized canids. They have a stout build, short legs and a distinctive appearance with a somewhat fox-like face. They are highly social animals that live in packs. Their pack structure is unique compared to other canids, as they often exhibit a cooperative breeding system where multiple adults help raise the pups. They are skilled hunters and use their sharp teeth to capture and consume their prey. These dogs are adapted to a semi-aquatic lifestyle. They are excellent swimmers and are often found near water bodies. Their partially webbed feet and water-resistant fur make them well-suited for these environments. They are primarily nocturnal, this behavior helps them avoid human disturbances and predators. Maned wolf is the largest canine in South America, weighing 30 kilograms and up to 110 centimeters at the withers. Its long, thin legs and dense reddish coat give it an unmistakable appearance. It is a crepuscular and omnivorous animal adapted to the open environments of the South American savanna, with an important role in the seed dispersal of fruits. It communicates primarily by scent marking, but also gives a loud call known as roar barking. This wolf is a solitary animal and does not form packs. It typically hunts alone, usually between sundown and midnight, rotating its large ears to listen for prey animals in the grass. The wolf apple, a tomato-like fruit, is the maned wolf's most common food item. With some exceptions, these fruits make up between 40 and 90 percent of the maned wolf's diet. The dire wolf was larger and heavier than the modern gray wolf. It had a more robust build, with shorter legs and a stocky body. It is believed to have been a top predator in its ecosystem. Fossil evidence suggests that it primarily hunted large herbivores that were common during the Pleistocene. It likely used a combination of pack hunting and scavenging for food. The exact cause of the dire wolf's extinction is not fully understood, but it occurred at the end of the Pleistocene epoch, during a period of major environmental change. African wild dogs are highly social animals that live in packs. Packs typically consist of a dominant breeding pair and their offspring. Cooperative behavior is a key aspect of their social structure, with all pack members contributing to hunting and the care of young. They are known for their exceptional teamwork and cooperative hunting behavior. They are among the most successful predators, with a high hunting success rate. They often pursue prey over long distances, using their stamina and endurance to wear down their quarry. Like other canids, it regurgitates food for its young, but also extends this action to adults, as a central part of the pack's social unit. The young have the privilege to feed first on carcasses. Habitat loss, fragmentation, human-wildlife conflict, and diseases transmitted by domestic dogs are among the major threats to their survival. The Sardinian dole was a small fox-sized canid related to the modern African wild dog and dole. Isolated with very little large prey, it instead evolved to specialize in hunting small fast-moving animals, flattening its body low to the ground while stalking in a similar manner to Ethiopian wolves. Powerful shoulder muscles allowed it to launch into sudden high-speed lunges, and it had an especially strong flexible neck that would have been used to grab at its zigzagging targets and shake them to death. Unlike most large canids, which are widespread, generalist feeders, the Ethiopian wolf is a highly specialized feeder of Afroalpine rodents with very specific habitat requirements. It is one of the world's rarest canids, and Africa's most endangered carnivore. 
It is listed as endangered, on account of its small numbers and fragmented range. Threats include increasing pressure from expanding human populations, resulting in habitat degradation through overgrazing, and disease transference and interbreeding from free-ranging dogs. It is restricted to isolated pockets of Afroalpine grasslands and heathlands inhabited by Afroalpine rodents. Its ideal habitat extends from above the tree line around 3200 to 4500 meters. Coyote is versatile, able to adapt to and expand into environments modified by humans. It has 19 recognized subspecies. It is highly flexible in social organization, living either in a family unit or in loosely knit packs of unrelated individuals. Primarily carnivorous, its diet consists mainly of deer, rodents, birds, reptiles, fish and invertebrates, though it may also eat fruits and vegetables on occasion. Its characteristic vocalization is a howl made by solitary individuals. Humans are the coyote's greatest threat, followed by cougars. Genetic studies show that most North American wolves contain some level of coyote DNA. Coyotes can be infected by both demodectic and sarcoptic mange, the latter being the most common. Mite infestations are rare and incidental in coyotes, while tick infestations are more common, with seasonal peaks depending on locality. Japanese wolf was one of two subspecies that were once found in the Japanese archipelago, the other being the Hokkaido wolf. Phylogenetic evidence indicates that Japanese wolf was the last surviving wild member of the Pleistocene wolf lineage, and may have been the closest wild relative of the domestic dog. Many dog breeds originating from Japan also have Japanese wolf DNA from past hybridization. As human populations expanded and settled on Hokkaido, the landscape underwent significant changes. Forests were cleared for agriculture and development, leading to the destruction and fragmentation of the wolf's natural habitat. This loss of suitable habitat likely reduced the availability of prey and disrupted the wolf's natural behavior. Wolves were often perceived as a threat to livestock, particularly domesticated animals like cattle and horses. As a result, humans began to hunt and exterminate wolves to protect their livestock and reduce potential economic losses. The dingo is a medium-sized canine that possesses a lean, hardy body adapted for speed, agility and stamina. It is closely related to the New Guinea singing dog, their lineage split early from the lineage that led to today's domestic dogs, and can be traced back through the maritime Southeast Asia to Asia. The oldest remains of dingoes in Australia are around 3,500 years old. They often live in family groups, with a dominant pair maintaining their territory. They are also known to be more independent and less social with humans than typical domestic dogs. While most dingoes are not aggressive toward humans, there can be individual variations in behavior. Some factors, such as a sick or injured dingo, might affect their behavior and make them more likely to show aggression. Of all members of the genus Canis, the wolf is most specialized for cooperative game hunting as demonstrated by its physical adaptations to tackling large prey, its more social nature, and its highly advanced expressive behavior, including individual or group howling. It travels in nuclear families consisting of a mated pair accompanied by their offspring. Offspring may leave to form their own packs on the onset of sexual maturity and in response to competition for food within the pack. Wolves are also territorial, and fights over territory are among the principal causes of mortality, and curiously. Very little is known about the movement of the Arctic wolves, mainly due to climate. The only time at which the wolf migrates is during the wintertime when there is complete darkness for 24 hours. This makes Arctic wolf movement hard to research. In the wild, Arctic wolves primarily prey on musk oxen and Arctic hares.